everybody. Welcome to the show. It is a great day indeed as Joe Biden has won the presidency. He has clinched the presidency by clinching the state of Pennsylvania. <clears throat> and now he has 273 electoral votes with totals outstanding in Nevada, Arizona, Alaska, North Carolina, and Georgia. And while it has been a crazy week, the victory is nonetheless sweet for Joe Biden. And Joe Biden has captured the White House after five days of waiting. Although there has yet to be a consolation, spe a concession speech from Donald Trump. I'm sure Donald Trump and his forces will try and um, battle it out in the courts, <clears throat> but I believe that it will not amount to much because I firmly believe that Donald Trump doesn't have a leg to stand on. So Donald Trump has lost the presidency, even though he c declares the fight is far from over. I doubt very seriously these court fights go anywhere. Um, so, yeah, it is, it is a very good day indeed, and it is a great day to be an American, <clears throat> because the process works. <clears throat> So yeah, we um. <clears throat> let me go ahead and run down the results as they are right now. Uh, in the popular vote total as of 12.45 Eastern Time, Joe Biden, the Democrat, has 74,488,579 votes. That is 50.5% of the vote. He has 273 electoral votes, and at that, of course, uh, I'm getting this off the total off of uh, um, the Washington Post site. Trump has <coughs> popular votes 70,337,214, that is 47.7% of the vote, 214 electoral votes. Uh, let's talk about Pennsylvania. They have declared it with 95% of the votes in. Joe Biden has 3,345,724 votes, while Donald Trump has um, 300 or 3,311,310 votes. That is a <coughs> percentage-wise, Biden leads 49.6 to 49.1. Nevada, the other state, uh, Joe Biden has a lead of 642,604 votes to 616,905 votes. That is two percentage points ahead, 49.9 to 47.9. 93% of the votes are in there. Uh, the battleground states so far, Biden has won Pennsylvania. In Georgia, Biden leads by 0.1%. In Arizona, Biden leads by 0.6%. In Nevada, Biden leads by 0.2%. By 2%, I'm sorry, two full percentage points. North Carolina is the only <coughs> battleground state that Trump is leading in right now. That's 1.4%. Uh, that's the only good news he's gotten so far. The Senate right now is at 48-48, although... Um, Right now, the Alaska race will probably go to the Republican, and barring a sudden change, um, more than likely the North Carolina Senate race will go to Tom Tillis. And, but there are some, a couple of uh, results that are very interesting to say the least. In Georgia, the two Senate races will both go to runoffs because. The two Senate races did the winners of the two Senate races did not have 50% majority. Um, they're going to go to runoffs, and that'll happen in January. So, for the time being, 
<clears throat> in the next Congress, the Republicans will have a 50-48 edge. But, and that's a big but, you're going to see a all-out effort by Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, excuse me, Kamala Harris, I'm sorry, I keep wanting to call her Kamala Harris, Kamala Harris. Um... Probably not the last time I'll make that mistake, so my apologies. Kamala Harris. Um, we'll be going all out to win those two seats. I figure that Georgians will have to deal with political ads for another couple of months, but that's your problem, not mine. <laughs> all right, uh, let's go ahead and give you, um, if I can get there, uh, can I get it here? The House. Um the Democrats have lost four seats. Republicans have gained four seats, but the Democrats look like they are poised to win uh, control again. They, the Republicans have need seventeen more flips to, or they need seventeen flips to win the majority. They have only gotten four so far, so they will keep the D Democrats will keep control of the House, and that will be very interesting indeed, to say the least. Uh, let's talk about the. Results so far. <clears throat> Let me give you a rundown of the results as they are. Um, if I can find the um, the battleground states, I'd like I mentioned uh, Nevada earlier, Arizona right now. Biden has a roughly twenty thousand vote lead. Biden is six one million six hundred twenty six thousand nine hundred forty three. Up on Trump's 1,606,370. That is 49.5 to 48.9. That is with 96% of the votes counted right now. And so Arizona is yet to be officially called, but it doesn't matter. Pennsylvania has been called. And that goes to Joe Biden. In the state of Georgia, uh, Biden has now had a 7,000 vote lead. 2,461,455 votes to Trump's 2,454,207 votes. And that is looking more and more like it'll go to Biden. North Carolina, this has pretty much held steady, so I believe Trump will win the state. <clears throat> the gap has not really closed that much. Trump leads 2,732,818 votes, 50% exactly, uh, or, or fit roughly. <laughs> Biden has 2,656,303 votes, that's 48.6%, and that is with 97% of the votes in. I do not believe he will have enough votes to catch Trump in the absentee ballots and such, so I don't think Trump is going to have to worry about North Carolina falling to Biden, but it will be too little too late as Pennsylvania has been declared for Biden. More than likely, Arizona and Nevada will fall to Trump. Georgia looks to be going to, to uh, excuse me, Arizona and Bi Nevada will be going to Biden. Georgia looks to be going to Biden. The only other one, uh, Alaska, they are notoriously slow for counting um, their results, but Trump is going to win the state. They've not called it yet. <clears throat> so, barring a, a miracle of biblical proportions, Alaska will go to Trump. Trump currently leads with 46% of the vote in. 108,231 with 62.9%. Biden, 56,849, 33% of the vote. No real surprise there at all. So, those are the states that that have yet to officially, aside from Pennsylvania, to be called. Pennsylvania has been called. Joe Biden has won the presidency. Now, Trump is not conceded yet. He said he's going to go to court over this. Uh, I don't think it's going to go anywhere. Um, I think it. the irony will be is that uh, Donald Trump's Supreme Court nominees will be will not have any way to um, hand him the victory. So, Unless there is something <clears throat> that is going to um, be dramatically changed, I, you know, it's it's looking more and more like that it's going to be a big victory for Joe Biden. Uh, not 
a landslide like had been expected from the polls, which I didn't expect the polls to be right. But Biden has won the presidency. And <coughs> now let's talk about 2024. I do not believe Trump is going to run in 2024. First of all, he'll be way too old. Second of all, he may be in prison by that time if the North New York District Attorney has anything to say about it. And thirdly, there are going to be plenty of Republicans who want that job. Nikki Haley has already started kind of hinting at maybe a run. Uh, <clears throat> Ted Cruz will probably want to run again. Um, I don't think Lindsey Graham will be running because he's lucky he got... Uh, South Carolina Senate seat again, although he might not be in there for long if um, Biden gets in and there are some investigations into what may be going on. So here is my take on what's going to happen over the next few weeks up to, to the inauguration. <clears throat> Will there be some violence? I hope not, but let's face it, there may very well be. Uh, you're going to have a court case that will probably go all the way to the Supreme Court. And how ironic would it be that Donald Trump loses and his Supreme Court nominees are the ones that basically tell him, hey, you don't have a case here, pal. And I don't think he does. Um, you can throw all the accusations and allegations and all that, but if you don't have the, ba if you don't have the evidence, it ain't going to go anywhere, folks. It's not going to go anywhere. So... Um, you know, that that's pretty much it. Let me go. I'm going to try and find a full results page and give you the results of all the presidential races and the, and the key battlegrounds for the Senate. Because um, I really want to, I want to do that. Uh, I don't know if we're going to get a, uh, not a uh, we're not going to get a concession speech from Trump. I don't even think after the courts are through with this they're not going to uh, do anything like that so now the latest is president-elect Biden will speak Saturday night I'm sure that'll be a victory speech <clears throat> I gotta figure out where the results are so all right let me do this okay let me just go in in here and on my computer I was doing it on my phone uh, let's go to ABC News and see if we can get it there. Well, you know, it's one of those things that if you didn't see this coming, then you, you really haven't been paying attention because this has been brewing for a very long time and... <coughs> It's just the fact that we may not have had the best of candidates in there. Let's see if we get some official results. Okay, let's go with the 18 that are solid Democrats um, of the 51 races. Um, California has gone to Biden 77-33. That's with 65% of... Or I should say, I'm sorry. Uh, California has gone to... Biden 65 to 33 with 77 percent of the vote in. Colorado has gone to Biden 55 42 with 95 percent of the vote in. Connecticut 59 39 Biden. Uh, D.C. of course no surprise here Biden wins 93 to f 5. <laughs> that almost always goes Democratic. Delaware uh, 59 40 for Biden no surprise there. Hawaii, no surprise here. Biden, 64-34. Illinois, 55-43. Massachusetts, 65-32 for Biden. Maryland, 63-35 for Biden. Minnesota, 53-45 for Biden. That looked to be possibly a, a target for Trump. That looked a bit iffy at times. But Minnesota has come through. New Jersey, 58-40. New Jersey has in the past shown occasions where they may go Democratic, but ever since the uh, Obama won, he has, the, the, I'm sorry, the state has gone 
Democratic. New Mexico, 54-44. New York State, 58-40. Of course, a lot of folks will say the upstate voted for Trump. The city voted for um, Biden. That's probably more than likely what happened. Oregon, 56-40 for Biden. Rhode Island, 59-39 for Biden. Virginia, 54-44. That's becoming more and more Democratic, obviously because of the buildup in Northern Virginia. Vermont, 65-32. Vermont used to be a state where Republicans were competitive. Now it's become more and more of a state where they are more solidly Democratic. And Washington State, 59-39. Let's go to the 14 solid Republican states. Alabama, 62-37 for Trump. Arkansas, 63-35 for Trump. Idaho, 64-33 for Trump. Indiana, 57-41 for, for Trump. Kansas, 57-41. Kentucky, 62-36. Louisiana, 58-40. Uh, North Dakota, 65-32. Nebraska, 59-39. Oklahoma, 65-32. Tennessee, 61-37. Utah, 59-37. Wyoming, 68-30. And Wyoming, or excuse me, West Virginia, 68-30. Wyoming, 70-27. Now, these are the likely or leaning states. Arizona has not been declared yet. Biden is leading by one percentage point, 50 to 49, with 97% of the vote in. Florida has gone to Trump, has been declared for Trump, 51-48, with 96% of the vote in. <clears throat> There'll be a lot of talk about Biden's failure to reach young um, Hispanic voters in South Florida. That may very well have cost him the election there. Maine has gone to Trump. Not, excuse me, Maine has gone to um, Biden, but one of Maine's electoral votes has gone to Trump. In Nebraska, one of the electoral votes has gone to Biden, so it's canceled each other out. In Michigan, another key state, Michigan, it's Biden up by three points, 51 48. That's with 99% of the vote in. North Carolina, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Trump has a lead and will more than likely win that state. New Hampshire is uh, solidly for Biden. I'm surprised they didn't put this in a solid Democrat, 53-49. That's with 90, 90%, 99% of the vote in. Nevada, still yet to be called. They do have 94% of the vote in. It's 50-49 Biden. Pennsylvania has been declared today. That has pushed Biden over the top, 50-49. to 49. And Wisconsin... Uh, Biden does have a lead there. It's 49-49. Um, but a pretty solid lead there. Eight likely are leaning Republican states. Alaska, like I said earlier, they're going to go solidly Republican. It's just results are taking longer. Uh, Iowa, 53-45. Um, a disappointment, I'm sure, for the Democrats. They wish they were hoping to take Iowa. I think if Joe Biden had been more focused on farm issues... In the Midwest, I think he could have taken Iowa, but unfortunately he didn't. Mississippi, surprisingly, was close early, but it was closer than expected in the polls. But Trump has taken over. He's he's leaning, he's winning there. He's been declared there. Missouri has gone for Trump. Montana has gone for Trump. South Carolina, closer than expected. 55-43. The polls had a lot closer than that, but obviously the Republican vote got out and. Um, they won their South Dakota, 62-36. I'm surprised some of these votes, um, uh, you know, Mississippi, Missouri, Montana, and South Dakota are likely or leaning. I figure they'd be solidly. Texas, 452-46. Once again, the Democrats thought they might have had a chance in Texas. Not quite, but that margin continues to eke closer and closer to the day the, te the Democrats take Texas again. And that may very well happen. Two are listed as toss-up by ABC News. Ohio has been called for Trump. Uh, I don't know why they have it as a toss-up, unless there is a surprise brewing in the absentee balance. I doubt that's going to happen. Uh, Trump will take that state. Georgia, like I said earlier, is looking more and more likely to go to Biden. So there is that. Okay. Let's go to the Senate races right fast and take you to that um, and the interesting battle that's brewing there. Uh, right now, 
Um, there are some Senate races that have yet to be called, but I believe North Carolina will go to Tom Tillis. With 97% of the vote in, Tom Tillis leads 2,641,032 votes, 49% to Kyle Cunningham's 2,544,560 votes. Now the question will be, if Cal Cunningham didn't do that sexting thing with whoever it was, uh, would he have won? That's going to be up in the air for a long, long time to come. Uh, let's see, where else? Georgia. Georgia is an interesting situation. David Perdue does not have 50% of the majority yet, so he could very well be facing, more than likely be facing a runoff. And in the second seat, um, Ralph Warnock has 33% of the vote to Kelly Offner's um, 26%. They will have a runoff because neither one has 50% of the vote. And that will be an interesting battle to see who wins that seat. So there are some disappointments, obviously, for the Democrats. They thought they could get Susan Collins of Maine, but she won by 8 percentage points. Uh, they thought they could get Lindsey Graham, but they didn't get get the job done, unfortunately. Um, let's see where else. <clears throat> I think those are the only seats John Corbin won pretty surprisingly as closely than expected. But um, I figured he probably would win that race. Um, Mitch McConnell won pretty handily. I think that um, the fact that McGrath faced a strong um, primary challenge, unexpectedly primary challenge, kind of led to some undermining of her support. So I think that race could have been a lot closer had um, there been more of an effort to, to seal up Democratic support behind McGrath in that state. Um, let's just go down. Mark Kelly, a big winner over at McSally in Arizona. Um, Oregon, Merkley wins for the Democrats. Let me go through the Results so far, Oregon goes to the Democrats, Arizona to the Democrats, New Mexico to the Democrats, Colorado to the Democrats, Minnesota, Illinois, Michigan, Virginia, New Jersey, Delaware, New Hampshire, Rhode Island, and Massachusetts. In the, in the Republican column, they've got Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, South Dakota, Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas, Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Iowa, Tennessee, Kentucky, West Virginia, Maine, and South Carolina. So the only three seats that were four seats that actually remain open: two are in Georgia, one's in North Carolina, and the other is in Alaska. But this is probably going to be called sometime in the next couple of days for the Republican Sullivan, who's leading almost by a two-to-one margin there. So I would suspect you're probably going to see that called in the next day or two. Alaska is always notoriously slow for their votes coming in. Let's go to the House now. Um, it will be the Democrats winning, controlling again. They are at 217 according to ABC News, Republicans 203. So the Democrats have lost five, Republicans have gained five. And we'll bore you with the... Uh, with the details, um, except to tell you the gains. One in New Mexico, uh, one in Minnesota, uh, one in Iowa, and one in Oklahoma, and one in South Florida. So those are the five gains by the Republicans over the Democrats, although there's one in Michigan. There has been one gain by... Um, the Democrats, that's in North Carolina in District 6. Manning has taken that seat. So six gains for the Republicans, one loss for them so far in the House. Um, there are still 16 races that are a toss-up, but right now as it looks like the, the um, Democrats will keep control of the House right now. Governor's races, there's really been only one really contested governor's race. Um, that's in North Carolina. And Roy Cooper has won that pretty, hand, pretty solidly. 51-46. Um, the only other Democrat to win uh, was the 
incumbent uh, Inslee. Uh, pretty much all the others went expected. Montana to the Republicans, Utah to the Republicans, North Dakota to the Republicans, Missouri, Indiana, uh, West Virginia, Vermont, and New Hampshire, although I'm sure the uh, Democrats would like to pick those up. But generally, uh, Vermont New Hampshire tend to vote Democrat for federal offices and Republican for local state offices. So there is that. And of course, <coughs> there was the there will be plenty of governor's races in two years' time. That's going to be an interesting v battle because if M McConnell stays as majority leader and tries to do the same thing he did for Obama, um, I think you could very well see the Democrats win in 2022 because people are fed up with this obstruction. That would mean South Carolina's governorship would be up, and uh, others will see it. We'll take a look at that. Let's um, let's go back to, to to the Democrat, not to the Democrat, the presidential race. Biden is projected, like I said earlier. Uh, Pennsylvania has gone to Biden. Uh, that is one of the three so far gains that we mentioned leading up to this. The only one that escaped Biden was Ohio, and Ohio right now is pretty much solidly. Uh, in the Trump column, he's got about a 450,000 vote lead. So that looks pretty solid for the president so far. A bit of a disappointment for Joe Biden. He, I'm sure he was hoping to win that state along with Wisconsin, Mis Michigan, and Pennsylvania. But the big, big story, of course, is Pennsylvania going for uh, Donald Trump. Although there is news that uh, Rudy Giuliani... Will file a lawsuit, uh, or says Trump will file a lawsuit contesting Pennsylvania's vote count. That won't go anywhere, I'm sure, uh, unless they find something that. But I, I highly doubt that's going to happen. So, uh, let's get before we end the podcast. Let me go ahead and give you some more results. To not results, but to give you some more um, local, not local, but up to date results. Okay, uh, Alaska. Donald Trump at this hour is 56 percent percent of the votes in. He leads Joe Biden with 180 108,231 votes. That's 63 percent of the vote. Joe Biden has 56,849. That's 33 percent. Alaska will more than likely be called for for Trump very soon. In Nevada, uh, Joe Biden continues to lead. Uh, 642,604 votes to 50% to Donald Trump's 616,905 votes, 48. That lead has pretty much stayed steady. Um, Arizona has a, Joe Biden has a 20,000 vote lead right there. 1,626,943 votes to Donald Trump's 1,606,370 votes, 50-49 for Biden. In the state of Georgia, Joe Biden leads by roughly 7,000 votes, uh, 2,461,498 votes to Donald Trump's 2,454,256 votes. So Biden leads there with 99% of the vote in. By the way, Nevada has 94% of the vote in. Arizona has 97% of the vote in. The only good news for Donald Trump is North Carolina is 98% of the vote in. Donald Trump leads by about 75,000 votes, roughly. Donald Trump, 2,732,818 votes to Joe Biden's um, 2,656,303 votes. So North Carolina should go to Donald Trump, but the rest of the uh, races, aside from Alaska, uh, that are still outstanding, Georgia, Nevada, and Arizona look like they're going to go to Joe Biden. So with that, uh, we bid you adieu. We hope you have enjoyed this podcast. And we will talk more about the aftermath of this election, the legal ramifications, and all of that. So this race is not over yet, but it's pretty much has been declared for Biden. For everybody here, it's good day, good luck, and may the good news be yours.